Hey guys, Lola here. So I just thought I'd come back with another running diary. This one will be nice and brief because I am tired, y'all. All right, so I have another running diary that I'm going to edit and put up before this one, hopefully. Um, but yeah, how have you guys been? So it is now taper time. So it is three weeks before the marathon, so I am tapering down my running. And I am still using this book, Road Racing for Serious Runners, because obviously I'm serious, obviously. And um, basically, it's just highlighting that in the last few weeks, you need to make sure that you don't do too much. You kind of reduce down, aka taper, your mileage. Um, the week that ends two weeks before your marathon, you're doing 80% of your peak mileage of 40 miles, on my thing. Um, then in the week before, you're doing 60% of your peak mileage with your long this week. My long run is 14 miles. So and then it kind of gives more tips about the last six days beforehand, um, how to do your training. It actually tells you which days to run. And if, um, for those last six days, run at the same time that your race will be so that your body gets used to it. The Wednesday workout before the Sunday of your run, you want to use that as like a marathon pace training short run that kind of bolsters you mentally, physically, emotionally. And then, let's see, um, even if you feel fatigued after that run, you still have time for massage and rest. And of course, three days beforehand, um, you should still be increasing your complex carbohydrate intake, drinking plenty of fluids, and staying away from alcohol and caffeine, which will dehydrate you. One other thing that I'll talk about in this video, which is just kind of highlighting um, something I've learned more and more about pure endurance runs, which I know a lot of other people kind of see it differently. Um, but as this book and my other book have shown me, yeah. um, one, it's not just to increase your mileage. Um, the main thing is one, it wants you to start using fat more at a given pace so that you are using a mixture of carbohydrate and fat and you don't run out of glycogen as easily because the minute you start actually running low on glycogen, that's when your performance starts to dip and you start to slow down. It forces your muscles to adapt and increase their glycogen storage capacities. Is that a lot of people kind of want to go slowly and just increase the mileage but actually you need to make sure that you're going at a brisk enough pace that you will by the end of the run be depleting the glycogen that you have forcing that stimulus that your body now starts taking on more glycogen and storing it better within the muscles so yeah you need to not run slow that the last two things it does is that it increases your capillary density so more blood with oxygen and nutrients can reach your muscles and carry away the waste products mm -hmm. as you get a bit of fiber type adaptation. You know, so the, the higher your percentage of slow twitch fibers compared to fast twitch fibers, the better you will, well, the more likely you'll be very successful in your marathons. However, even if you're born with a um, high proportion of fast twitch fibers, your pure endurance training will help your fast twitch fibers to gain a degree of the positive attributes of slow twitch fibers. So yeah, that's all I wanted to tell you guys today. I hope you've been well. Don't forget to sponsor me. All right guys, I will see you later. God bless and be good. Yeah, we getting down, getting down with the beach. We getting down, getting down with the beach. You know the seas. Here we go.